In this movie, we take a continuing look at some of the tools we have to work with in the interface. We just finished looking at the camera tools over here in the tools palette and how it related to the layers palette over here in the lower right hand corner, the layers tools back in the tools palette, and also some of the drawing and fill tools. We'll explore the timeline here and again as we kind of progress through this, these things are all intertwined at this point in time. And so we'll continue where we left off with the camera tools to show you how the timeline works a little bit. The timeline has its own set of controls that we'll explain in more detail as we start getting into productions. But basically what this does is it gives you a visual demarcation or way to control objects in your animation over time. It reads left to right. Zero meaning at the very beginning, and usually that's where you set up everything and then progress to frame one to however long you want it. You've got some special options here that we'll use called onion skinning. We've got a visual indication of what frame it is. So if we're having an animation for television in the United States, that's about 30 frames a second. So 30 pictures are drawn every second. So one second worth of animation comes all the way over here to 30 frames. I just clicked there and we saw this red line move. That lets me know that my space and time is changing and lets me see exactly down through all the objects in my scene what is going on with each one. I'll go ahead and bring this back to timeline zero here by clicking. Well, let's see this in action just a little bit. And we're going to have a section specifically, well, quite a few sections actually, on animating where we get very heavily involved in the timeline and how you use it and work with layers in it. So don't feel like this movie will cover everything that uh, you'll need to know about it. We will get into that in more detail. We've got our camera moved away from the two layers of objects. We have our blue rectangle and I've renamed this file here to blue rectangle or that layer. If you want to go ahead and open this file, you can go ahead and access the files that come with this tutorial series and just open the timeline movie if you would like to or anime scene. What we'll do is we'll move this camera over time. I'm going to go ahead and select 30 or move my timeline ahead 30. I'll click right up here. Our red line goes down and we can see now we've gone forward in time but nothing has changed. So what I'm going to do is select my camera translation tool here, the track camera. And I'll call your attention to one more little thing that uh, is apparent for all the tools when you work with them. Remember how we've got that customization for the tool up here that gives you specific parameters of the tool, how to change, and that's how, of course, we change the Z depth of the blue rectangle. We can see now where in 3D space our camera is sitting based on this information. Well, down at the bottom is another dynamic field. It tells you little hints about how to use the tools you've selected. So right now we have the camera tracking tool selected. It lets me know that I can move the camera side to side, up and down, and if I hold the shift key, I can constrain it so that it moves perfectly. However, there's another option here. It says Alt to move forward and back. And then it runs right into the next word, which is frame 30, a visual indication that I'm on frame 30 down here. Well, for the Macintosh, it's the Alt key or Option key. For the PC, it is the Alt key. So if I want to, in this scene right now, at 30 seconds, I can go ahead and click in my view window over here and move the camera to the right. You see a little path notated in our top view over here in the right window that we've got. And we could activate a different split or we could activate a four-way view and have different cameras in position for left, right, and top plus our main view, which is a great way to keep very precise movements in your animations. Well, let's say I want to move a little bit closer into the scene. I'm going to hold the Alt key down as my little indicator or helps down here say. I'll click the Alt key. I'm going to go ahead and pull into my scene a little bit by clicking and dragging the mouse. Now I'm going to come over here to my Pan tool. I'll select that. Again, we have a dynamic change down here. We can rotate the camera side to side, up and down, or hold the Shift key to constrain to preset like 45 degree increments. Well, I don't want to constrain it, so I'm going to go ahead and move the camera like this. Let's come back to our timeline and see how this is starting to behave. The timeline is very dynamic and it updates depending on what you're doing in your scene for all objects you touch or change the position of or change color of, those types of things. If I scroll down here, we'll notice that there's a little camera icon over here and a blue dot. 
This blue dot is called a keyframe. And a keyframe heralds back to the way back days of animation where a lead animator would draw key important scenes in the movie and then all the junior animators would draw all these frames in between. Well that idea has progressed into the digital age and here we are with a keyframe where I moved ahead one second to 30 frames we have some movement that's changed and now the program has made our job tremendously easy by filling in the camera movements in between time 0 and time 30. If I grab my little timeline here and drag it it's called scrubbing. We can see that we have this different motion going on in time. That's how you begin using the timeline to control, preview, and see your animations as you work on them. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and take a look at the styles palette and explain some of these cryptic little things over here on the right side that I've just been touching on.